Hi students. Let's go over how to fail MEE 120 in five easy steps. Well, maybe that's not such a good idea. But here are some of the worst CAD practices that I typically hit people lots of points for. I'm going to show you the vile, evil, offensive way, and then the correct, elegant, pristine way that A students use. And you can decide which way you want to go. But as you can tell, I'm just a little bit biased. Okay, let's go over to SolidWorks. And first and foremost, fully defined sketches. The standard for the class is to use fully defined sketches. So let's do it wrong, and then we're going to do it right. I'm going to click on the top plane, create a new sketch. And I'll just drag a rectangle out. I'll say OK. Exit the sketch. I'll extrude it. And let's, we'll just drag this up a little bit. 0.6 inches of height. Yeah, that's fine. OK, so you've got a solid on the screen. Everything looks great. You hand it in. And you would probably get hammered for about, oh, I don't know, 30 points or something like this. The class standard is that everything should be done parametrically. Now let's go back in and fix it so that we would have gotten full credit. I'm going to expand the feature that's boss extrude, and I'll go into the sketch. Notice that there's a little minus sign right there. That means it's an under-constrained sketch. So I'm going to edit the sketch. And I'll even orient it to my view there. Now my eye is looking perpendicular. I'm rolling the mouse wheel. That zooms me in. So in order to be fully constrained, I'm going to apply Smart Dimensions. I'll apply The length of the top, let's make that three and a half inches. We'll do the height, let's say one and seven eighths or 1.875. And my default is inches right now. So I can put inches in. I could also put millimeters in if there were some number of millimeters I want. Now, maybe I want this to be 40 millimeters. That's fine. It's just distance. Okay, but notice right down here, it says I'm still underdefined. To fully define a sketch, you must size the object and you must locate the object. So I still need to put a distance back to some fixed reference. In this case, I'm going to use the origin. So I'll go from the vertical line to the origin. And I generally put zero. I like to locate my stuff right about the origin. And then I'll go from the origin to the bottom line. And I'll make that a distance of zero. Now we are, we've got a model that we could get full credit for. Notice that it says fully defined right here. That's your standard. That's what you're looking for in all sketches. I'm going to say OK. I'll exit my sketch. And what we should see and do see, I'll press F to fit the screen, is that everything updates. That's what we're looking for. And our model is right on the origin. OK. So that's the first big thing. Not too hard, but some people like to hand in uh, just extrusions or revolve solids based on not dimensioned lines. And that is not going to fly. OK, now I'm going to show you some bad things and some good things. And I'm going to need two blocks for that. So I'm going to go back into my sketch. Generally, I never put two solid bodies in a single file. It should always, always be one. 
But for the sake of this demonstration, it's going to be really convenient to do that. So what I'll do is I'll set the distance between them at one inch. I will set the height. That's fine. I'll add a relation to say this line. There are my selections. This line and this line are collinear. They're in line with each other. I'll clear the selection. And I'm good. So this line and this line are in line with each other. We have a distance. Oh, you know, I think thing we don't have. I see a blue line, so I need to set the length from here to here. So let's do that. And say maybe two and a half inches. I'm back to a fully defined sketch. Everything's happy and I would get full credit. Everything updates and now I have two blocks. Great. Okay, now let's do one of my pet peeves. What I don't ever, ever, ever want to see you do is this. I'm going to click on the face and then I'm going to create a new sketch. So we can sketch on planes or we can sketch on flat faces. I'm going to grab a circle, pull it out. Remember the rules. I have to both size an object and locate an object to have it fully constrained. So again, I'll smart dimension it. I'll give it a diameter. Now let's say we want this to be 5 eighths of an inch. We can put in a fraction in our unit. There we go. 0.625, that's 5 eighths. I'll come off this edge to locate horizontally. Maybe I'll go inch and a half over. Come off this edge, go to the center. And I will go 18 millimeters up. Great. I'll get out of my sketch. I'll do an extrude cut. Instead of blind, blind just means to a depth. So I'm going to say through all, go through the entire model. I'll say OK. And I have a hole. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, what's wrong with that? I wanted a hole, I got a hole. For a simple hole, it's not such a horrendous thing. As soon as you get away from anything other than a plain, simple, drilled hole, it becomes a mess. So the next most complicated hole we might want is a threaded hole. Okay, so how do I, how do I make a threaded hole? Well, let's change the diameter of this, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'll go back in, I'll edit my sketch, change the diameter, and let's say I want it to be a quarter of an inch, 0.25 inches. I exit the sketch, everything updates, and it's great. Okay, but I really want a quarter 20 threaded hole. I want to have some threads inside there so that a machinist can screw in a bolt. Really super common thing. The way threads are made is that you drill an undersized hole and then you use something called a tap to go in and cut the metal away and that forms the thread. Great. Cool. What size 
drill should I use to cut away just the right amount of material? I have no earthly idea. Well, actually, I do, because I've done this before. But most people, most times, will not have any idea. So you'd have to take 10 minutes, go look it up in the machinery's handbook, and then drill the proper size hole and pray you get it right. However, what you could have done is this. I can click on this face to say I'm going to put a hole over here. I can use this thing called the hole wizard. And here are all the different types of holes you can make. So this one right here, the one that says straight tap, that's your common threaded hole. So let's pick that. We're going to go ANSI inch. We'll do the type. We'll do a regular just tapped hole. Look at that. It's got all of our sizes already done for us. So if I want a hole that's a quarter inch in diameter, 20 threads per inch, probably one of the most common threaded holes you could ever ask for. It's right there. Here's our end condition. Do we want to blow all the way through? Do we want to go to the next face? I'm just going to choose through all so that I make it just like this hole. I'm going to make sure I put cosmetic threads on it, and you'll see why in a minute. That's going to lead into our next do not do. I got to tell it where to put the hole. So there's the prototype of my hole. And every time I keep clicking, it drops another one in. I'll hit escape to stop dropping in holes. And now I just need to locate it. I'll just accept that value. And I also need to locate my other hole. And there we go, we're fully defined again. That's the standard of the class. So we know what size feature and where it's gonna go. And we're good. Now look at this action that's going on. You see the dotted line, this represents the outside of the thread that's down inside the material. Remember in lesson one, I told you that hidden lines are represented by dotted lines, or excuse me, hidden edges are represented by dotted lines. Well, here they are. This is exactly the right size. We get a nice little decal in here that represents the threads. And this hole, let's look at this hole. I'm gonna click on the face. Let's measure it. My diameter is 201. So SolidWorks is smart enough to know that I need to drill a hole that's 0 0.201 inches in diameter so that when I come in with the cutting tool, I take off the exact correct amount of metal. That's pretty snazzy. That's a lot better than coming over here and trying to remember all that. So that's why I'm so adamant about using the hole wizard to get all your dimensions correct. The other reason is when we go and we create a blueprint so I just happen to have a blueprint already connected to this. Let's open our drawing. I'll get rid of this. We don't need that. We don't need that. So 
So we can see the uh, nice hidden line right around the center of the hole. And we'll say insert, come down to annotation, and hole call out. Click on the edge of the hole. Look at that. It says two holes, 0 0.20 through all. Now we could increase the number of decimal places. Tap it, quarter 20, unified national course through all. And it wrote all of that, and I didn't have to do a thing. Let's see what happens when we go to the other hole. 0.25 through. Well, I'm lazy. I like it to write out all the note for me correctly. That way I don't have to remember it. And that's another reason that you use the hole wizard. You get all the proper hole callouts. Okay, let's go back to our model. All right, let's get rid of this. So we'll delete our feature. I'm just going to click on it, press delete. Cleans everything up. Another thing I see students do that's really bad. It's, uh, I think I'm going to get rid of this one also. I'll see students do something like this. Come in. I'll put a point here, a point here. They'll dimension the location of the points. Great, that locates that point. Locate this point. We have a fully defined sketch. Perfect. Okay, that sounds good so far. But here's where it all goes wrong. I'll select the face by clicking on it. Click on the Features tab. Oops, I forgot to exit my sketch. Okay, but I can still see my two little points. Click on the face, the whole wizard. I'll choose just a plain drilled hole in the upper right. Still a quarter inch hole. I'll do positions. And then they'll click there and click here. And the problem comes they look down below and they say, oh, I have a fully defined sketch. I'm all good. The problem that I have with this, folks, is that you have two sketches that are used to define the location of those holes. There's no need for that. So we're using sketch 5, which is redundant with sketch 6, all doing the same thing. That would be very, very confusing if someone else picked up your work, the better way to do it is first let's delete this feature. We'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of this. Now let's put our holes back in. So we'll do positions. We'll drop one here. We'll drop one over here. Do some smart dimensioning. Come on. Okay. 
or fully defined again, that's all good. Now notice, sketch 8 is a locating sketch. It did all of the functions of the previous sketch that was under the feature, plus all of the functions of that previous external sketch. So put all of your feature locating information under the feature. Do not create a whole bunch of other external sketches to do a redundant task. Okay, One locating sketch. And I generally ding people pretty hard for that. Okay, now here is one of my absolute pet peeve, awful, most hateful things. This is when people use the thread feature. And the reason is that this hogs up a huge amount of memory. It really, it just brings your computer right to its knees. And you're not going to see it when you have just one part on the screen. But if you're making a Lamborghini transmission, or if you're working on the F-22 Raptors engine, which probably has uh, two or 3,000 bolts in it holding the cases together, it will absolutely cripple your computer. The right way to do it, let's go back in. We'll change the type, but we can change to a threaded hole. You have to make sure that your symbolic threads are turned on. That's why the little dotted lines didn't show up and the decal didn't show up. This is what I want to see. Any threaded hole should have the decal inside, the dotted line around the perimeter. Okay. So this is good. This is the way it should be. And in fact, let's even do this. Let's change the color to green to say that's good to go. Now let's do it wrong on this one. So let's see, we'll create another sketch on this face. We'll do a circle. And trust me, this hurts even while I'm drawing. Oh, we'll do a quarter inch hole, which completely messes it up. Because if I were to come along with a cutting tool now and try to cut a quarter inch thread in that, it would fall right through the center. But, okay, I'm going to show you why this doesn't work. We'll come off this edge, go to the hole. Then we will locate vertically. Great. So we're fully defined. We've got our hole. We'll cut it all the way through. And now we're going to insert the thread feature right up here. And we get a warning that says, do not use them for production quality threads, blah, blah, blah. Even SolidWorks says these are awful. But so we'll do the thread location, put it on the top, select our bottom, okay. 
So we've selected an upper edge, a lower edge. It's dropped in a quarter 20 thread. Okay, it wants an extrude thread. I'll say OK. And a lot of people think, wow, that looks so cool. Yeah, but it's taken up a huge lot of GPU clock cycles. It's taking up a huge amount of RAM. That is really, really bad. The other thing that's really bad about this is if you have that in there and, a C and you hand this model off to a CNC programmer, they're going to need to click on a top edge and a bottom edge to create this hole. They're probably going to come in with a cutting tool. They're going to spin it around in a circle to make an exact sized hole. What are you going to click on? You're going to click on one of these spirally edges? There's nothing I can do with that. Maybe I could click on this top edge that's all you know, intersecting with other faces. This is a programmer's nightmare. It's much better if you just had a hole like this, and I can just click on the edge and say, machine tool, follow that edge. That's easy. And then I can just say, machine tool, go to the bottom edge, piece of cake. But to say, machine tool, follow this crazy spiral, no, 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 you don't want to go there. Okay, so just another reason that we never, ever, ever want to use the thread feature. And I've told people that I will take off 15 points per occurrence on an exam if you put this thread feature in there, rather than having this nice cosmetic thread. It's that much of a problem. Okay, last item. Trust me, MEE120 is still passable, folks. Just got to follow a few simple rules and just keep it simple. So let's say that with these two holes, I was going to drop some bolts through it. And this isn't really a CAD thing. This is more of a machine design thing. So I'm going to change the type. I'm going to go back to a plain quarter-inch drilled hole. I'll say OK. What I see a lot of junior engineers do is they will drill a quarter-inch hole, and they'll try to drop a quarter-inch bolt into it. And, you know, I'm probably connecting two different components. Doesn't sound so bad. But what happens if the mating parts hole is just a little bit out of position? I'm just fitting here. I'm just fitting here. If on the other one, the hole is maybe over here slightly, it never goes together. So if you're going to put a bolt through a hole, make sure you put some clearance. There are all kinds of guidelines in the machinery's handbook for this. But what I would do is I would come right in here, I would edit the feature, and if I was going to use a quarter inch fastener, I might make it a 32nd of an inch larger. So I'll change the hole size to 9 30 seconds so that I get 0 0.031 inches of clearance. Now, if my mating part has its holes slightly off position, I should still be able to bolt my parts together. The bolt will just be slightly off center in the hole, but that's okay. That happens all the time in the real world. Okay. So those are the five easiest ways to fail MEE-120. So just remember, I want to see fully defined sketches. Do not cut extrude circles because the blueprint callout will be either inaccurate or lacking information. 
Never make holes the same size as the fastener. If you're going to put a clearance hole in to drop a bolt in, make it just a little bit larger. Okay? Do not use external sketches. So if you have a feature, make sure all of the sketches that drive that feature, like this hole, its driving sketches are all underneath it right here. There should be nothing that this feature is referring to that's up above up here somewhere. Okay? And never, ever, ever use the thread feature. Always use cosmetic threads. Okay? So follow that advice and you should have a great MEE 120. Thank you for watching.